Good morning. You know, have you ever been disappointed with God? Now, I know that maybe borders on blasphemy, but it's a fact. And Philip Yancey wrote a book years ago, and the title of it was Disappointed with God. And what motivated that book was a graduate student that came to him and said, basically, is it right for me to be disappointed with God? And Philip Yancey talking to him said, you know, well, tell me kind of what's going on. He says, well, everything in my life is just turned to dust. He says, explain. Well, my love life is totally shattered. It was just obliterated. Vocationally, I've been incredibly disappointed. Religiously, I don't see any answers to my pursuits. And number four, physically, I stay sick and am right now encumbered with an illness that I really don't think is fair. Wow. He said, don't you think I have a right to be disappointed with God as a Christian? So he wrote this book. He came up with three questions that he said nobody ever asked out loud. Here's what they are. That if God wants to reveal himself, why is he so hidden? Two, if God wants a relationship with us so bad, why is he so silent? Number three, if God is so good, why does so much bad go on? And the book, I'm not going to get into all that, but I want to give you just without getting into the fall of man's, obviously a lot of the reason for that. Uh, it's uh, our free will is reason for that. We make bad choices and we uh, reap what we sow. And as Christians, we suffer and there's glory to come. And God allows us, allows us to go through that in order that we might be conformed to the image of his son. All of those are factors. But what is a real solution in the midst of that disappointment? Well, you know, Jonah was displeased with God exceedingly about what he did with the Ninevites, not destroying them. But this is the key. Seek him in his word. At least Jonah did that. Seek him in his word. God wants us to seek him no matter what is going on. And when he's hidden and when he's silent, he's really not. He spoke in all of this book. We really have no claim to say that, God, you're not talking to me. Because he is, has already talked to us in this book. And if we're not in it, and we're not hearing the word, we're not listening, either to preachers or uh, people that are sharing circumstances, all these things that God would speak through, but primarily the word of God is Holy Spirit speaking to you through that word then we really have no right to claim we're disappointed with God because he wants to speak to us and he'll keep speaking. Number two, you see, look at life with the expectation that God is answering you. He says, if we ask, we receive. We knock, the door is open. He says, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. He wants us to keep on doing those things, present tense. Never stop. But always looking. You see, when I pray about something, I really expect God to answer it. I don't just pray about it and say, okay, God, I think that, you know, I, you just pray. You, you never know if anything's coming or not anyway. That's really not the way, what we do, is it? We pray and we look for the answer. We look for it in the Word of God. We also look for it in circumstances. We look around to see. We know God's heart. We know that he wants to give us better than we want to give our own children. Therefore, if we pray and we just never look for anything, never expect it to really happen, have we really exercised any faith at all in God's goodness and God's love and God's principles? Thirdly, Romans 8, 28. God works all things together for good to those that love God and those that are called according to his purposes. Trust God. Seek him in his word. Look for him in the circumstances of life and in the word of God as he reveals himself. And three, trust God no matter what. God bless you and have a great day.